Welcome back to Just Plays of Programming. In case you're new to the channel, hello there. My name is Kareem, and I've been a Donut developer for at least eight years. So, what's the topic today? We're going to be discussing Blazor, obviously, but why I think other Donut developers who have not made the plunge into Blazor, or at least have not taken the time to learn it, should learn it, or go even further, apply it to your next production, uh, production or enterprise level project that you have to do. The reason why I believe most firmly that Blazor is something that should be invested in is because there are a lot of technology trends that point that this is going to be the future for us .NET developers when it comes to at least web application development if you're going to stick with the Microsoft stack. Even if you're not going to do that, Microsoft seems to be going in the direction of trying to unify their technologies together and Blazor does span across not only web, uh, web applications but also desktop applications and mobile applications if you decide to go down that path. And there has also been a lot of interest in Microsoft to push Blazor to a much better state than it has been and listening to us Blazor developers out there about certain changes that we want to see specifically when it comes to WebAssembly and WebAssembly itself being uh, a core part of Blazor, at least is one of its hosting models, one of the options you got which is also a big thing because WebAssembly is very getting very popular. But don't worry, I'm gonna get into all this in a moment. Just get through the intro real quick. So let's start with the first and foremost reason I think you should learn Blazor is because it gives you the option of building a web application from front end to back end without using JavaScript at all. Now, is this practical? Um, I think there will be a need for you to use a little bit of JavaScript here and there. That's my experience of Blazor, because sometimes you have a need to use a specific library that only has a JavaScript uh, written library. And in order to bring that in, you need to do something called JS interrupt. But if you have an option that does not, you know, you don't really need this library or whatever, or a specific library, and you are fine with using the Blazor equivalents out there, then yes, you can get away with building an entire web application from front end to back end without uh, interacting with JavaScript at all. In fact, a lot of my videos on this channel do not interact with JavaScript and does, do not require me to interact with JavaScript. Or if they do, it is very minimal code and very simple code, like uh, like a load loading thing or to load up animations or something. Or if I'm actually just teaching you how to use the JS interrupts in case you ever have a need for this JavaScript. But for the most part, you don't really need it. There's good libraries out there like Mudblazer that you can use in order for you to build your components really quickly. And you could just use you know, your ASP.NET Core, dot, you know, whatever conventions you already know in order to build your backend. There's nothing really crazy about it. And it just depends on which hosting model you believe will meet your needs the most. If you are used to something like Angular or React, then WebAssembly might be for you. And if for and if you're more used to something like Razor, or if you think that um that you want to have server rendering above all else, you could use the Blazor server. But the, what we're going to go on to the second reason why I think that uh, you should learn Blazor and goes back to WebAssembly is because WebAssembly, in case you don't know what it is, essentially is what allows us to to use C Sharp on the browser. It, it basically encapsulates you know our C Sharp code on the browser so it could be run in there. Not only that, but it also has other languages you can use as well. But in this case, in Blazor's case, we're gonna be uh, talking about C-sharp specifically. And if we go to this survey here, this is basically um, uh, the WebAssembly usage by language. So between 2021 and 2022, it goes up uh, between 10%, I think. Uh, what is this? I'm not really sure what this percentage is, but I think maybe that might be of 13, 14, 15 around there. Um, but it is one of the biggest clamors between uh, 2021 and 2022 in terms of interest levels and the usage for WebAssembly because they have like an interest one down here as well with the same thing. So at the very minimum, the community is very interested in this uh, in Blazor when it comes to WebAssembly, especially if you're in the .NET space. If you've been around um, like I have, uh, trying to learn Blazor since .NET 5 or whatever, then you would understandably be excited for more interest in this product, even though in the beginning it was a little rough, let's just say it there. But now Blazor is getting into a better and better place. There's more development for it. And not only that, Microsoft has shown consistency when it comes to interest level. So if I go to .NET 7, so this is um, the most recent uh, roadmap that they had. And what was up here in the roadmap was 
C sharp dot net Maui. And let me see, we're supposed to be in ASP. And in, when it comes to Blazor, if you ever want to find where it is on the roadmap, sometimes they won't write it here. It will have to be within the ASP.NET Core section. And in the ASP.NET Core section is where we actually find anything that has to do with Blazor or Razor pages. So here they brought out a lot of different things for Blazor. Now, now between you and me, I haven't gotten this to work yet. But they have, um, a, there's a lot of, interest when it comes to Microsoft adding more and more Blazor stuff into their .NET uh, roadmaps. And that has not changed. In fact, .NET 8 probably has the most exciting changes for Blazor. In case you don't know, uh, if you ever use Blazor, you understand that when it comes to Blazor WebAssembly, so the thing that I talked about back here, uh, if I go to this Blazor server, this particular web hosting model is takes a while for it to load the initial content. After that, everything's quick because you have loaded basically everything um, in the beginning. So it's kind of similar to Angular or React apps where you have to load up um, all the content first and then you can start using it. The same thing happens here, except it's a little bit more slower because there's a lot more to for it to load basically. However, it seems that Microsoft has finally found a solution for, uh, for, for this problem in the form of something called Blazor United. Ah, okay, yeah, here we go. So this is what I'm talking about. So I had this prepared already. So in this case, the whole point of this is to allow you the ability to switch between uh, which ones you want to use to render. So whether you want to render it from the server or render it from the um, web assembly, uh, specifically when it comes to the load time. So let's say when you're trying to load up your app, you have uh, all the stuff that uh like all the the front facing page the very first page like the login pages and stuff like that all that can be rendered through the server so that your uh your users get the content quicker and then after that it renders any other component it needs to render um after the fact or in the background WebAssembly is rendering it so that it has it on the client so you don't miss out on so you have basically the best of both worlds where server the biggest con with the server is the amount of connections it needs and the fact that you always need a connection to be uh, on, you don't have to use that for other components that are rendered from WebAssembly, where vice versa on WebAssembly, the biggest problem it has is the fact it has to load up everything in the beginning. So you will probably have uh, only some parts using the server hosting model in order to bring that content back. And then after that, everything else could be WebAssembly. That's how I imagine this to work. And they are building it out. And that's and this is what they're calling Blizzard United, and they're pushing it for .NET 8. I don't know if it's going to come out in .NET 8, but they, they're really working into it. So they seem to have found a way to, to fix the problem that Blazor WebAssembly has. So even now, even with this issue, I still think Blazor is worth learning um, because not only that, but I think I alluded to it a little bit earlier, but I, okay, I alluded to this a little bit earlier. I mentioned that Blazor could be used for other things like desktop and mobile, and that comes to the form of .NET MAUI. So .NET MAUI is something new that they've created. This is ba this is kind of based off how Xamarin is, but it's supposedly better and faster. I've used it a little bit. I haven't really used it that much, but I'm planning on building some projects with it in the future, so I'll really give you a definitive um, conclusion to it. However, .NET MAUI has the ability to use Blazor components in it. So if you are ever building web application, and you need to build a, a Blazor desktop app or a mobile app if you need that as well, you can build it through .NET MAUI and presumably use those Blazor components in .NET MAUI. So you have less development work to go through because you have something that can share between the different application types that you might want to build. Now, personally, I do not know why you would have a web application, a desktop and a mobile all sharing the same thing. Like, I don't know. I don't know this use case, but I can't see a use case where you have a web application and a mobile uh, application doing basically the same thing. And you have uh, the two different types there and then sharing the same, you know, UI components and stuff like that. So this in theory can save a lot of development time. And again, all C sharp. So you basically have, so this is the whole unified, uh, you know, technology thing that they're trying to build. And Blazor seems to be a very important part of it. So it does seem like they are devoting a lot of resources and time into Blazor and the community is seemingly to, uh, more, very, very interested in its growing as 
Blazor gets better and better, especially if you're in the .NET space. Uh, presumably, if you are in the .NET space, you have more of an interest in Blazor than someone who isn't. However, if you are new, then, you know, go check it out. Maybe you like object-oriented programming in C-sharp, and then you have actual good options this time around when it comes to building your web applications, because but let's face it, if you're here, you, you're doing a web application of some sort, or you're at least checking out the Blazor stuff. Either way, I like it. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you do, please give me a like and subscribe. Maybe check out this next video here. Maybe, maybe sort of. Also, I have a free Blazor cheat sheet for you. I worked out very hard on it and it's just basically condensing everything that Microsoft Docs would tell you that you might need for your next Blazor project. The other thing about WebAssembly is that it is used in serverless and containerization as well. So these are things that are becoming more and more common these days. Like I know you can containerize other apps, but WebAssembly specifically because of the ability to um, have any language that, uh, that it's available for to be in its own little environment, it really allows itself for containerization specifically when it goes into the cloud finally. So presumably that means that when you do cloud development and you need to have this up and you need to have some sort of application up there, you can host it this way and it'll be a lot easier. Or if you need microservices and stuff, then um, that'd be good too. And it also supports serverless. Now, I don't know much about the serverless stuff, but it says that people are interested for that specifically. And I have not tried that out yet. So, you know, putting my cards on the table about that. However, I do like the fact that Blazor interest is growing. I do like the fact that Microsoft has a lot of interest in continuing Blazor development and the fact that this other thing to allow one of the biggest pain points of Blazor's WebAssembly specifically is the loading issue. If Blazor United works, then we finally have a fix for this problem. We finally have something that doesn't require, oh, you might still need to use uh, pre-rendering for something else, but now you have an actual solution that allows you to give the, um, give your client or your user access to your application while load stuff in the background without slowing down anything or doing some weird tricks and stuff like that. So, I really do hope that Blazor United pulls through with this solution because that will make it so great. That'd be crazy. However, I do believe that even then, that Blazor is still a really good option for you .NET developers out there because of the fact that you don't have to learn basically a new language. This is just C-sharp. All you have to do is learn how the framework works and you basically can use all your C-sharp knowledge in there. So it's really, uh, especially if you come from Razor, it's really easy to learn. So. That's, that's basically my pitch. And uh, and yeah, if you like that kind of content and you like my kind of content, please check it out. Check out other videos. Like and subscribe. Support me out here, please. Let's grow this Blazor community together. So, see ya.